Hello and welcome to another video. This one's yet another puzzle video from my Discord. Uh, if you're not a member of the Discord, join in the description. Uh, basically, I post these periodically and the idea behind them is make a small project to learn something. Uh, this one is about shebangs. This actually comes from a little bit of work that I'm doing in my real day job. Uh, we're currently upgrading the Python version and right now we have the Python version hard-coded in the shebangs of a bunch of files. And so the puzzle today uh, that we're going to do, a little bit small, well, hopefully you can pause and zoom in, otherwise, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but the, the point of this puzzle is to do two things. One is clean up files that have a shebang but don't need one. Uh, for instance, if they are not executable. Also, if you don't know what a shebang is, I will link that in the description as well, but it's basically, it basically makes it so that a POSIX-like operating system knows how to run your particular file. Um, but there's a bunch of files in the code base right now that have shebangs but aren't executable, which is meaningless because they can't be run by the operating system, so there's no real reason for them to have a shebang. Uh, so the first step of this puzzle is going to be removing, uh, removing shebangs from files that are not executable. And then the second part is going to be replacing the old shebang with the new shebang. And I give you a couple of hint videos here. Um, if you're gonna do this with shell, I'm gonna show a solution with shell uh, and then maybe we'll poke at some ideas if you're gonna implement this in Python or something else. Uh, my thought with the solution to this puzzle is it could, it could really be anything. Uh, like you could write a simple shell script or just do it interactively. Um, mostly because you're only going to do this once, hopefully. It's not, a, it's not a repeated task. But if you were going to do it as a repeated task, you would probably you know, write this in Python or some higher level language and make it more exact and repeatable. Uh, but anyway, we're going to try and solve this problem. I'm going to show you how I would think about this and do my solution sort of live. So let's jump into that. OK, so in order for this, we need to set up um, example data. So I'm going to make some directories and uh, make their example slash one. Oops, explains. What am I doing? <laughs> example slash one. And uh, we're going to have a couple of files. One that's not executable that has the incorrect shebang. Uh, yeah, actually, we'll just do example one uh, not executable and put the shebang at the top, user bin and Python 3.7. We're going to make one that is executable, user bin and Python 3.7, and make sure to make that executable, so chmod plus x. Uh, we're also going to make a file, uh, and this is, this is one of the test cases that a lot of people uh, struggled with a little bit in this project. We're going to just copy a random binary in here. Uh, we'll use bin cat uh, to example. So you can see that we have an executable file, but if we uh, look at you know the first ten bytes of this file, uh, oops, example slash cat, uh, you'll see that you know we get <laughs> we get kind of uh, you know, random null bytes and stuff. Basically, this is not a text file, but it is executable, so it's something that we should make sure that we handle in this um, in this code that we're going to write. Are there any other cases that I want to handle here? Uh, you would maybe also have um, some oops, CP example one executable. Uh, you would maybe also have some other executable that does not have the, the incorrect shebang. Um, another thing that you might also do is, uh, you know, have, have the shebang embedded in the code and that probably shouldn't get changed. Uh, maybe also have it embedded in the code, but at the beginning of the, the line, user bin and Python 3.7, uh, just to handle some additional edge cases that you might mess up while implementing this, because you might, you might be a little bit overzealous in your replacements. And maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever outcome you want to get out of this. Um, in, my in my particular case, I actually wanted to replace this throughout the entire file, because uh, you know, anything that's generating Python code should also make sure it has the right shebang. But um, for the video, we're probably just going to ignore these two cases here and only try and match it on the first line of the file. Uh, and just for sake of um, doing this slightly properly, we're going to 
<laughs> make a backup of this example to example uh, backup. That way, while we iterate in the video, we don't blow away the original contents. Okay, cool. So let's uh, start with my kind of thought process on this. My original thought is to loop over all the files in this and find the ones that are executable. And the find utility fortunately helps us out there a little bit. If we just start with find example, you can see that it's looping over all the files and all of the directories. Uh, we don't really want the directories, but we can filter that. So we can do dash type F. And so that'll get us just the files. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is look for things that are executable. And that'll do this. So these are the, the three that are executable. Uh, but we actually want the ones that are not executable. So we're going to put a little bang here. Uh, so now we have just the files that are not executable. Um, I probably should also make an example. Um, that does not match our um, thing here. That way we make sure it doesn't get rewritten or whatever. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we're basically only trying to find this particular file and not that one. So if we do, if we do our find command right now, so this is showing all of the non-executable files. From this, we need to replace the first line if it matches our particular thing. And for this, my brain is thinking, oh, we probably want to use some sed command. So what I would Google is uh, sed replace first line, maybe, only, something like that. Uh, replace first line. I'll um, probably scroll through some tech overflow. So this is kind of what we want here. So this uh, goes to the first line and then does a find and replace. But we're, what we actually want to do is drop the first line. So we want to basically want to find files where the first line matches something and then drop it. Uh, and I think, I think we can do that. Uh, said drop first line if matching. I'd conditionally remove first line with said only when it matches. This sounds exactly what we want. Uh, don't understand what this does. So this just drops the first line always. Uh, Okay, so this is match the first line and with a pattern and then delete it. I actually don't think this space here does anything. Let's actually try that out and see if that works. So if we do echo, hi, hello, hi, uh, and then we do said it was one or zero comma match hi, D. Uh, did that work? Let's see if we change it to hello instead. It should do nothing. Oh, that doesn't quite do what we want because this, um... wait, this deleted way more than I wanted it to. Why are there only two highs now? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> yeah, okay, so that very much does not do what we want to do. It almost works. So another way that I can think about this is to try and take this uh, and match with grep things that are on the first line. So we do xargs, xargs grep dash n user bin and python 3.7. And we want a dollar sign and a caret here uh, so that we make sure we match the line exactly. And so this will tell us things that match. The dash n here is showing the line number. So I could search for colon one colon. Now this wouldn't be perfect if our string contained colon one colon or if somehow our file name contained colon one colon, uh, which I think is possible. Yeah, so you could have a file with colons in it. <laughs> um, but we know that this is always gonna end with this string here. So we could be a little bit hacky here. Again, this is not maybe not the best solution, but um, if we're, if we're trying to go into one-liner hacky territory and not really maintainable code here, we could then do grep, uh, this and put a dollar sign here to make sure that that matches. Uh, so you can see that we are only matching lines that look like this and not, uh, if it was on another line. So let's actually, actually put 
uh, this on another line so that we make sure that we're not matching that. So this was before. Yeah, so you can see that we were matching it on line four, but we don't want to match on line four. We only want to match on line one. Okay, cool. So now that's matching. And then I can use cut, which uh, I've done a video on cut, <laughs> to uh, basically delimit this by colon uh, our colon fields to only find this first file. Again, this is not going to work if this file contains a colon, so it's not perfect, but it's good enough for our use cases. So this just gets us our file name. And then we can use that 1D that we saw earlier to drop files, this just 1D. I think you actually don't need the space though. Uh, send dash I, I is in place replace, 1D. And this also won't work on macOS because uh, macOS has um, worse said than. If we do this now, it should, oh, we need XRX, XRX said, yes. Uh, it should have removed that just from that one line in that file. Uh, example one, not executable. Cool, and it did. So you can see we no longer have a shebang at the top of the file. So this is kind of a hacky way to do this. This is actually similar to how I did this at work because it was good enough. Uh, and I was able to use git diff to make sure that I didn't break anything because uh, everything was version controlled. Um, but a better way to do this would probably be to write a Python script for this. So let's actually write a very simple script here. Uh, example, and let's actually make sure that not executable file has um, the same thing that we had before. Okay. We still have this edge case. And we'll copy this back here. Um, so let's make a little Python script. If name equals main, is system exit main. Um, and I actually kind of left out the second part of this problem, which is uh, replacing the shebangs. This one's not as interesting. Oh, this part right here. Uh, this part's not exactly, <laughs> not as interesting. Um, you could use the same uh, said pattern that I saw before. So you can kind of follow the same, the same pattern here, except instead of doing 1D here, uh, you would do a replacement. So you would do, um, so like you had high, you would do, said from hi to hello um and except hi would be your old shebang and hello would be your new shebang so you would use a a said replacement command um, i'm not going to bother showing that because i don't think it's that interesting okay so let's do this in python instead uh, so we're basically going to have to replicate this uh iteration the filter to look for files and the not executable part and for that, we're going to use uh, OS, and we're going to use stat. Um, and let's actually make a little argument parser as well. We need this. And I did a video on arg parse. I will try and remember to link that in the description. I might forget. <laughs> uh, but we're just going to give an input that's the directory we're going to use. Parser.parse args. And we're going to use os.walk and leave its root dir names file names. Uh, and we're going to switch to the other screen so that you can actually see. Um, we actually don't care about dir names here, so I'm going to ignore this variable. And root is the current joined path to what it's looking at. File names will be a list of file names in whatever directory it's looking at. Uh, and this will recursively go through. All of all of the directories and files that you have there. And then we can do for file name in file names, and this is just the base file name. So um, actually, we can just do let's just print this for now, so that you can see what we have working so far. And that satisfy our type annotations. Uh, so if we do example. You can see that we're looping through everything. We see this cat, the executable two, executable three, um, and you can see that it has like a, a joined path here. So we need to basically take this path and join it with this path, and we can do that with the os.path module, or you could use pathlib if you want, but <laughs> I don't like to use pathlib <laughs> uh, personally, but that's, that's just a personal choice. Um, so we're just going to replace file name with the joined path. 
And so now we need to check if it's executable. There's kind of two ways to do this. One is to use os.stat on the file name and look at st mode. Um, this colon o. I think that'll put it in octal for us. Uh, and you can kind of look at the last three segments of this to see whether it's executable or not. So the, the 755 is, uh, 604 is not. And uh, there are constants in the stat module. Uh, it's I, X, yeah. But these three constants in the stat module tell you whether it's executable. So you would and those with the mode. So I'll, sh I'll show this first, I guess. Uh, executable mode equals stat.six uh, user board with stat.six ix group stat.six other. I don't know why I did this underscore thing twice. Uh, and so you could say, you know, if os.stat file name file name dot st mode anded bitwise and with executable mode if that is equal to executable mode basically saying do i have all three of those bits set uh then print executable otherwise print not executable so if we run this again uh you can see that cat is executable but these two were not. So this is one way to do this. There's actually a slightly simpler mode, which is to just test whether you can execute it. <laughs> this is a little bit, maybe worse in some cases, but the code is way simpler. Uh, you can do if os.access, and there's a, it's x okay, yeah. Yeah, so you can use access to see whether you have the ability to access the path. And X OK is can I execute the path? So you could do file name OS dot X OK. Executable via access. Oops, sorry, got an F there. Otherwise, not executable via access. This is kind of another way to do this. Uh, and you can see that we get the same result here. Uh, because there's no special weird permissions situation going on. Um, there are some bugs with access. <laughs> I know of one in particular on Mac OS when running Docker for Mac and the volume is mounted from the host. Uh, sometimes Docker for Mac will incorrectly produce, uh, I think, true always for OS.access. And this is just a bug in Docker's file system driver. Uh, <laughs> is unfortunate, but anyway, this is kind of two ways you can do this. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm gonna use this one for no particular reason. Okay, so now that we know whether it's executable or not, we can do our two things that we wanna do here. Either remove the shebang or add or replace the shebang. And this is where I talked about earlier that it's tricky because we have this cat. Uh, we need to make sure that we're reading in a binary mode so that we don't, uh, we don't, you know, if we, if we just do with open file name as f and do f.readline, uh, read line, uh, this is actually going to error for the cat case. We actually need this for both of these. Um, you'll see that we get a Unicode decode error, and that's because it's trying to read it as UTF-8, and that's not going to work here. So we're gonna we're gonna specifically open this in binary reading mode. We'll use RB here. Um, and I'm just gonna slurp the whole file into memory. This is not the most efficient way to do this. You could write to a temporary file next to it and read, you know, chunk at a time and and not do this. Uh, but this is this is you know, it's one off code. I don't really care so much how performant it is. Um, so first line equals this. And basically, we write our logic here. If our first line is that one that we want to get rid of, so old shebang equals user bin and Python 3.7, new shebang equals user bin and Python 3. And these will actually be byte strings. Uh, 
And read line, I believe, gives us the new line at the end. So we're going to basically say, uh, well, that's, that's a little bit tricky. You could preserve new lines. We're going to... We're gonna make some assumptions that they're always <laughs> Unix new lines. You could you could do some other stuff to check whether it's Windows new lines or legacy Mac new lines. Not that they should be, but anyway. If first line is equal to old shebang, uh, then contents equals f dot read. So basically, remove remove the first line. Um, otherwise. Contents equals first line plus f dot read, and then um, you could rewrite that file with open file name wb as f. Uh, actually, we can just skip. Um, we can just skip in the else case. We don't need to do it right here, so we can just do continue. <clears throat> and then we can do with open file name. And we wanted to write this, wb as f. And then you just rewrite the, the file in that particular way. Oh, this is in the executable mode. <laughs> I did this in the wrong branch. We want to do this in the not executable mode. Um, but the logic is very similar for this other one. Um, just copy, copy and paste this here. And for the top case, we want to replace the shebang. So this is new shebang plus this. Um, yeah, that's basically the same. And you could probably simplify the code a little bit uh, by combining some of these if statements, but this is the general idea of this. I think this will work. So let's try this. And it didn't print anything because <laughs> I got rid of the print messages. Uh, but if we look at one slash non-executable, it no longer has that shebang at the top. And we didn't replace this one, which is great. And if we look at executable, uh, it replaced the 3.7 with Python 3, which is great. Um, so now we have both of those that are, are working the same. So this is kind of like a, a more involved solution in Python. You could, I talked about some places where there were problems with this, but this is a, a pretty good approximation of this. But anyway, that was a lot. Uh, there should be a new puzzle on the Discord by the time I publish this. If I remember, we'll see. But hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, and I will see you in the next one.